Today we are talking about the eight worst exercises to build strength. Sweet, Mitch Hooper, I love this guy. Of course, any resistance training exercise is gonna be useful, but these ones are either unstable, impractical, or flat out stupid. All right, get after him, big boy. Let's go, let's see what you got. Now kicking this list off is dumbbell bench press of any sort. Well, let's unscrew this pooch. All right, here we go. Got my computer prop out. This thing hasn't worked in like a year and a half. I actually have written notes. Uh, but let's get into this. First things first, I have to acknowledge my bias on both sides of the equation here. I like Mitch Hooper. This is not a drama video. I'm not trying to pick a fight with him. When I'm watching Strongest Man on Earth, World's Strongest Man, the Arnold Strongman Classic, the Rogue Invitational, he is one of like two or three people that I am consistently rooting for. And as far as like strongman athletes that are also giving out information on social media, he's one of the higher educated. He's got a master's degree in a related field. He's actually a really smart dude. But that said, just because you like somebody and just because they are well-educated and they usually know their stuff, it does not mean all their ideas are good ones. That is a seriously terrible idea. Very impressive. Nobody do that. The second part of my bias here is that I don't like any of these videos that say, do this, don't do that. This is the worst exercise. This is the best exercise. It is awesome to share the exercises that work for you, that you support, that you find most efficacious. That's dope. I would love to see more videos like that. But these exercises that hinge on crapping on another exercise in order to make the case for their own, I just, I, I hate them across the board. And it doesn't matter who's doing it. Whoever you're thinking of right now, no matter if I have supported them in the past, I hate it when they put these videos out. There's a few people that actually do it really, really well. Like Mike Isretel just did a five best chest exercise video and he had this to say. Folks, a big, super important reminder. These are five of my personal favorite chest exercises, but that doesn't mean they're the only five effective chest exercises. And there's tons of other, literally dozens of other chest exercises out there that are just better for tons of people than these exercises. Now, in my opinion, that is the way that you do it. Sure, this video exists. He has some good points. He has some pretty weak arguments that I'm gonna go over here. We are talking about exercises that are good and bad for building total body strength. And I think that the arguments that he makes here are really weak. Now that said, I'm not looking for any smoke. I'm not looking for any drama. As a matter of fact, at the end of this video that he put out about a month ago, he actually asks us to let him know if we disagree with him. I'm just choosing not to do so in the comment section. I'm doing so with this video. So I got my notes, I've got my computer prop, I don't have a cool ass pool, but I do have this tree that looks vaguely like an Italian hand. Suck on that, Mitch. So with that, let's get into it. All right, exercise number one. Is dumbbell bench press of any sort. This blew my mind. When I first saw this video, I thought that it was gonna be clickbait with a bunch of reasonable uh, opinions, but he opens, he opens up the gates and he comes out with this dumbbell presses of any variation are inherently inferior or bad for building strength. Now, the case that he makes is that it relies on uh, the dumbbells, getting them into place can be difficult and unsafe. Uh, there's multiple planes of motion or uh, planes of freedom as he refers to them. And it's reliant on a number of muscles to act in a stabilizing capacity, which he personally feels are uh, detrimental to building overall strength, favoring absolute weight over others. And that's gonna appear a couple of times in his argument. The first point that I would push back against is that it is inherently safer to get it into position. The advantage of the barbell bench press, which is what he recommends, is that it has a specific bench so that you can get it into place and perform the movement. But he suggests that getting the weights into place or the fact that your arms can move through a range of motion as you're completing it, add a level of danger or risk that is undue that you don't benefit from. And I just frankly disagree with that. There are so many advantages to the dumbbell bench press that help you build strength that you cannot adequately replicate on a standard bar on a standard bench press. For instance, the range of motion, being able to bring your arms down all the way, get a full stretch helps with muscle development, not just hypertrophy, but also strength. And one of the important things about utilizing an element of stabilization in your strength building exercises is so that you can adequately express that strength when you need it. If this is just about total strength, 
total strength should be good for something. And if I'm only good in one single plane of motion when I have a support firmly against my back and my feet are firmly planted on the ground in a specific way, I don't find that as useful for total body strength as, say, the dumbbell press. The last thing he mentions is that you're going to be able to move more weight on a barbell than you are on the dumbbells. But that's because of a mechanical advantage of having the single bar, your triceps not pulling apart, but putting that force into the bar as they attempt to pull your arm, your forearm away from your body. Their function is to do this. That force is going into the bar. That is what allows you to lift more weight. That doesn't suggest, indicate, or prove, most importantly, that what you're resulting in is greater tension, greater stimulus, and greater growth. People have built massively strong chests with nothing but dumbbells. And if that's what you have access to, you're still going to build a very powerful bench. One that you could arguably use in more circumstances in your life than just a flat bench. A bamboo bar of any type or anytime weights are hanging down off of bars, anything that's adding instability other than just the movement itself. There is no strength purpose for this. The bamboo bar. The bamboo bar for any variation he thinks is not good for building total body strength. I wasn't aware this is a point of contention that we needed to address. Uh, so I agree. I agree, but like, who's arguing this? The bamboo stick instability, it can be good for recovery. It can be good for neuromuscular activation, recruitment, but not like building total body strength. And I don't think that any reasonable person out there, anybody who should be taken seriously at all, is trying to make the case that you should be using an overly flexible bar, a bamboo bar, any of its competitors to build strength. So yeah, sure, I agree, but strong man, Weak argument. Number three that we're gonna talk about, number six on his list of the sixth worst. And it's one of the favorites of people at the gym, and this is a bicep curl of any sort. This blew my mind. No one exercise builds strength in your entire body, so we're not even gonna to try to argue with that point. I don't think he was arguing that point. His main concerns here are it is low load, and it's a single joint, and it's inherently unsafe. And I would like to push back against all of that. An isolation or a single joint exercise may not be as good at building total body strength as uh, a compound movement variation, but it plays an important role in building strength. Isolation exercises should be used as accessories. We do our major compound movements to incorporate as much muscle as possible, and we reinforce that stimulus and that strength through the use of several isolation exercises, two or three different options in a given workout. The low load on the joint doesn't matter as much as he might suggest that it does because it is a mechanically difficult position to move the limb through. Therefore, the perceived tension and stimulus on the muscle is greater than a lower load that you could do with something like a row. The row is incorporating the back, the shoulder, the bicep curl is incorporating predominantly the forearm and the bicep. Now, the point that I have to push back against 100% is that if your biceps become too strong, it makes you more likely to have a tendon injury. Pose a larger injury risk. Stronger biceps tend to pull tendons off the bone. That's why every strongman that you see who's been competing for more than five years is gonna have a big scar in their elbow because ripping biceps off is so common. I think that that is a problematic point coming from a very educated person. The reason that you see, as he says, a lot of guys who've been doing strongman for four or five years, uh, especially competitive at the national, international level, is not because their biceps got too strong. It's because they're on performance enhancing drugs and that causes dysplasia of the fibrils in the tendons, making them more brittle, less flexible, and more prone to being torn right off the bone. Yeah, you add a strong muscle on top of that, you're gonna aggravate that circumstance. But I think it's the rampant PED use and I don't even think that a guy like Mitch Hooper is claiming that he himself is natural. I think that would be an absurd argument. PED use absolutely can be and has been linked to increased risk of tendon rupture and tear, whereas big muscles in general, not really as much, particularly if you are a natural lifter, particularly if you built your muscle over a very long period of time. Yes, tendons, they reinforce, they grow stronger, slower at about half the rate that muscle tissue does, but not to such a great extent that if done over the course of time, that you are dramatically increasing the risk. I could not find a single piece of literature that suggested just having big muscles meant that you were more likely to tear a tendon. So if there is some citation that Mitch has, I would love to see that because currently 
I think that is the worst argument he made in this entire video. The next ineffective way to build strength is very, very common, and this is deadlifting without straps. Agree. Full stop. Deadlift with straps, you're going to be able to build bigger, stronger back and legs doing the deadlift than allowing your grip to be a limiting factor. Lift heavier, get stronger, let's go. Strong man, strong argument. That are just simply unsafe, in my opinion. This one is a loaded Spanish squat. A Spanish squat is that one where you affix the back of your knees and you have your, your torso very upright and it's a closed chain knee extension. I have never heard anybody remotely make the case that you should be loading this heavy in order to build strength. This is a variation that you can use to get extra volume in, like a goblet squat uh, or walking lunges. Uh, you're not really going to build an enormous amount of strength using primarily load uh, as the key factor for stimulus. Uh, I, I don't see why anybody would do this. I've never heard of anybody making this argument that it's inherently superior. I feel like this one was just kind of thrown in there. So again, I agree, but strong man, weak argument. The number three worst total body strength exercise. And the next one that we're gonna talk about is- You've got to be kidding me. Either it got too hot out yesterday and the camera shut down or I ran out of space on the camera. I don't think that was it. Uh, I didn't get the last three points here, so I'm gonna to have to record them again or record the entire video again. And if that's the case, you'll never see this and never know that that happened. Uh, so I'm gonna get my damn shoes on and I'm gonna go cover the last three exercises and I am gonna make my point. <sighs> All right, thank you for your patience. <sighs> the hell was I? What? No, these are real, I need these. I'm old and I can't see crap this close. Number three is unsupported Nordic curls. For anyone who's not an elite athlete, this is just so much load and loading eccentrically has a higher risk of injury than loading concentrically. All right, once again, we've come to an argument where I, I don't know who is trying to say that. I don't know who's trying to say that a unsupported Nordic curl is a predominantly strength building exercise. Yeah, it's gonna make you more resilient. It's an incredible recovery exercise. Uh, this is something that you wanna do to develop the bicep femoris. Um, you, you want nice, strong, healthy hamstrings and the eccentric focus of this exercise can really help in a lot of ways. It's extremely difficult. Uh, and he points that out. It's extremely difficult for big people. He is much bigger than I am. I'm six foot three and 270 pounds. He's six foot three, six foot two, and like 340 or something like that. He is much bigger than I am. So for folks like us, the idea of being able to do an unsupported Nordic curl and all the way back up, that is extremely unlikely. Um, they make stuff for this. Like I've got one of the very first uh, Nordic bench uh, from Nordstick. You can set it up in angles in order to be able to assist you in developing that strength over time. This is a supportive exercise. So I don't really think that anybody is out there making the case that this is the exercise you want to do if you want to get hella strong. Uh, once again, I would say I agree, but this is a weak argument from a very strong man. His number two worst, the second to last that we're gonna talk about. And the number one nonsense exercise to me, I'm talking about partial squats. Agree. I actually agree with him overall about 95% on this point. There are some sport specific applications to the partial squat sprinters and people who are worried about their vertical leap. This is a legitimate exercise that you can do to develop those capacities. But when we're talking about total body strength, the ability to produce force through the full expected range of motion of a limb or a part of your body, a full range of motion squat is far superior. And what he suggests here, if you're looking to take out, say, the elastic reflex and to make this movement very difficult, is pin squats, which are tough as hell. And you'll build a lot of strength that way. So I would say, yeah, man, uh, honestly, I mostly agree. There are uses for this, not nearly as many as some folks out there would have you believe. Look at it, you, Joel personally don't hardly ever recommend partial squats except for specific sport applications um, or just incredibly limited mobility in an athlete. If they've got hip or knee problems and they cannot safely get into that position, then yeah, then we scale back to the partial squat. Uh, but otherwise, I 100% agree, man. Nothing there. And my last exercise that I'm also calling nonsense in the strength world is shrugs of any sorts. So he suggests that there's no real gain 
uh, because it's such a small range of motion, such a very specific range of motion uh, that you're not really going to develop a lot of total strength from this. I, I would disagree on concept. Uh, being able to hold your shoulders in position, regardless of the fact that it is a small range of motion, is important for things even in the sport that he does, that he is so freaking good at, like best or second best winning ratio uh, of all athletes in the modern era. You know, farmer's carry, just to name one off the top of my head. Being able to hold that position, being able to hold your posture under extreme loads is important, and that's incorporated in the shrug. He recommends the rack pull here instead, and in my opinion, that's not really a replacement. You're just adding extra muscles. You're going to be increasing your capacity in the shrug movement, but you're also going to be doing a hip hinge on top of it. So uh, while I agree that the rack pull is an excellent exercise, I would disagree that the shrug is an overrated exercise that you should not be doing. It has actual life application. People do this in real life. They pick things up and they hold their posture in real life all the time. So it is a perfectly acceptable exercise, especially when done correctly and you're not ego lifting. Make sure that you're moving up and back. You're squeezing hard and you'll have nice, strong traps. And that can actually assist you in expressing your strength in real life, in sport. So towards the very end of the video, he finally says, oh, this isn't about bodybuilding and this isn't about sport application. Well, that doesn't really change any of my opinions that I've expressed here. Because yeah, while we can you know, incorporate the idea of sport specific exercises or bodybuilding uh, in here and that there is an overlap between strength and hypertrophy and all of that, um, I still think that the arguments that you made for the vast majority of these choices weren't very strong. And I think that they were not representative of your higher level of education. I just don't honestly feel like you made this video because you felt like you had to. I felt like you made this video because you felt like you needed to make a video and you just chose these exercises. What I would love to see personally from you, from people that I respect, uh, and from people who make these kinds of videos, stop demonizing and vilifying an exercise in order to prop up the importance of the choice that you'd make. You absolutely have a strong enough strength resume to say, these are the exercises that I think are best, these are the ones that have worked best for me, and this is why I think that you should choose these over others. You don't have to shit all over somebody else's exercise, which they have used to get big and strong for decades. You know, we've seen that. We've seen that these exercises, for the most part, actually work. And quite honestly, you don't need to resort to that tactic in order to get your point across. You are the strongest man on earth. You are a world's strongest man. You regularly place on the podium on damn near every competition that you participate in. You, you didn't need that tactic. Anyway. That's how I feel about it. That is my gentle pushback on the ideas presented in that video. That is me attempting to do one of these commentary response videos that's not in a dramatic picking a fight way. Uh, I'd really love to see more of these exchange of ideas. And I love it when a content creator says, hey, this is my opinion. Uh, tell me what you think. So I'm going to tell you the same. Agree with me? Disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section. All right, before we wrap the video up for the day, if you are looking for a free program to get started, I have a link to a starter guide. It's 40 pages long. It's got free programs in it, free advice about how to get to the gym for the first time or how to get back to the gym after a long time. It's got like six free programs in there. In addition to that, if you want to save a little bit of money, I got some links to some affiliate codes that I happen to have. Uh, helps me out, helps you out. If you want to contact me about coaching or anything like that, I've got my email below as well. And brand spanking new, if you want to become a member of the channel and get every program in PDF form that I have currently put out, you can do that. You just click membership and it'll take you to a link that gives you access to all of those. I'm not really going to be pushing the membership thing very hard. It's just something I'm experimenting with to see if I can get some use out of it. I'd love to be doing this full time instead of splitting my time between here and working over at the school. So if we can make that happen, let's make that happen. Anyway, that's it. That's the video for today. If you liked it, they got a button for that. If you didn't like it, they got a button for that too. Either way, let me know about down in the comment section below. So until I see you guys again, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and find a little time to go fit yourself.